Established in 1947-49, the Semipalatinsk Nuclear Test Site, STS, is impressive in its scale. With an area of 18,500 square kilometers, it is larger than, for example, Chavashia, Chechnya, or Kaliningrad Oblast, and not much smaller than most regions of Ukraine. Before you watch this video, I'm going to ask you to support my channel with a thumbs up. It won't cost you anything, but it means a lot to me and my channel. Thank you. It itself is divided between East Kazakhstan, more than half of the area, Pavlodar and Karaganda regions, and right through the range passes the road from Semipalatinsk to Karaganda. Somewhere on its periphery, salt, gold, and hard coal are mined in the Karazira open pit mine that supplies the entire East Kazakhstan region. But most of the test site has seen nuclear explosions only from a distance, and in fact it was just a protective zone, so that no one for many kilometers did not come up to the sites located in its depths, each of which was in fact a separate test site. There are only four polygons similar to Semipalatinsk in the world. It covers an area of 18,000 square kilometers, covers the land of Abirali, former Semipalatinsk region, as well as some land in Pavlodar and Karaganda regions. Nuclear Tests The end of World War II marked the beginning of the Cold War. The US already had not only the atomic bomb in its arsenal, but also combat experience in Japan. The USSR, on the contrary, was lagging behind in the study of the atom. To create the first Soviet atomic project, it was decided to copy the American prototype, which had proven effective and workable in practice. By the summer of 1949, the first Soviet nuclear missile was ready. The nuclear bomb was designated RDS-1. RDS-1 was tested on August 29, 1949 at the specially constructed Semipalatinsk test site. It was the first of more than 400 nuclear tests to be conducted at the Semipalatinsk test site. After the first tests, the leadership of the Soviet Union decided that the steppe of Kazakhstan was suitable not only for surface explosions, but also for underground explosions in wells and tunnels. On August 12, 1953 the thermonuclear charge RDSS excess with the capacity of 400 kilotons was tested at the site. The power of the explosion was 20 times greater than that of the RDS-1. The ground explosion resulted in a wave of radioactive contamination, and there is still a slight radiation background in some places. In 1961 the first underground nuclear explosion in the USSR took place at the test site. As a result, the surface of the mountain in the area of the explosion rose by 4 meters, and a dust cloud was formed there, caused by a rockfall. The energy yield of the explosion was 1 kiloton. Over the years of existence of the test site approximately 30 ground bombs and at least 85 air bombs were detonated in the course of the tests. In addition, other experiments were conducted, including hydrodynamic and hydronuclear. The last explosion at the test site was on October 19, 1989. The landfill is 130 kilometers from the city. Semipalatinsk test site was the only test site near large settlements. All tests were held in strict secrecy. Experimental explosions were conducted without informing more than 200,000 residents of Semipalatinsk region. The USSR leadership did not report on the tests even at the time of actual explosions. For example, during the testing of RDS-37 on November 20, 1955 because of the weather conditions the plane was unable to drop the bomb and was forced to land at the airport of Janasame. The plane with the first Soviet two-stage thermonuclear bomb landed from the second approach thanks to the skills of the pilot. One day later, on November 22, 1955, the bomb was dropped on the target. The bomb exploded at an altitude of 1,550 meters. In seven minutes the diameter of the cloud was 25 to 30 kilometers. The hydrogen bomb with a yield of over 1 megaton tested by the drop resulted in many tragic events. As a result of the collapse of the ceiling in a house in Meili Axhari, a three-year-old girl died. At the moment of the collapse of the dugout in waiting area number one, located 36 kilometers from the center of the explosion, six soldiers of the security battalion were covered with earth, one of whom died of suffocation, the rest received minor bruises. Shards of glass and structural debris injured and bruised 26 residents of Semipalatinsk. In this city, 
three people suffered concussions as a result of the explosion. In total various damages of buildings were noted in 59 settlements. Windows of houses were blown out within a radius of up to 200 kilometers from the explosion epicenter. Damage to the environment. The atmosphere, water and soil were contaminated by radiation. The structure of the earth was deformed, many cracks appeared on it, and on the places of explosions the artificial radiating lakes were formed, even the underground waters contain uranium, strontium, cesium and other radioactive products. It was a blow to the ecology not only of the region, but also of the whole country. In 1965, the Chagon nuclear explosion resulted in the formation of an atomic lake in an attempt to create a water reservoir. Its water is contaminated with radionuclides and unusable. One in 20 children in the region exposed to radiation is born defective, says Anthony Butts, author of the documentary After the Apocalypse about the Semipalatins test site. Studies have also shown that there remain high relative risks of endocrine system diseases in the area near the former test site. Because of the poverty of the region, many are unable to leave it. They continue to use contaminated local crops and water. Before the landfill was taken into protective custody, many dismantled its structures to obtain scrap metal. Attempts to solve the problem. In 1989, Alza Sulimenev, a well-known Kazakh social activist, created the anti-nuclear movement Nevada Semipalatinsk, uniting victims of nuclear testing around the world. The movement resonated worldwide. On August 29, 1991 the Semipalatinsk nuclear test site was closed by decree of the president of the Kazakh SSR. After gaining independence, the people of Kazakhstan faced the question of eliminating nuclear weapons. The world nuclear powers were also interested in this. In 1993, Kazakhstan was one of the first CIS countries to join the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, and in December 1990 for the nuclear powers of the world signed a Memorandum on Security Guarantees for Kazakhstan. The memorandum guaranteed assistance to Kazakhstan in the event of aggression by other countries on its sovereignty, in exchange for full disarmament and disposal of nuclear weapons. In 1995, the last nuclear charge at the former Semipalatinsk test site was destroyed. From 1996 to 2012, Kazakhstan, Russia and the US worked to eliminate the consequences of nuclear tests at the former Semipalatinsk test site in order to render it safe. About 200 kilograms of plutonium as well as equipment used for the creation and testing of nuclear weapons were removed from the site. In 2008, work began to build structures to protect the most contaminated areas of the site. I thank you for watching. Your support is very important to me. Your comments and thumbs up motivate me to release new videos on interesting topics. Subscribe and turn on notifications. See you in the new videos.